You know those job titles that sound absolutely impressive at dinner parties but make your grandparents ask so do you work in a bank or yeah well quant developer is one of those and if you've been on the internet lately you've probably heard you need a phd in mathematics you need 12 lead code badges and you need to be able to solve stochastic differential equations in your sleep well not quite the truth is, getting into the world of quant finance is hard, but it's definitely not impossible, especially in 2025, when the rules are quietly changing. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through a realistic roadmap to becoming a quant developer this year. Not just what you should learn, but what actually matters, what to ignore, and how to build a CV that doesn't just scream, I did a Coursera course once. And before you ask, no, I'm not actually pulling this from Reddit forums. I actually am a quant dev. I live the job every day. And yeah, hopefully today I will successfully tell you how to get to that point as well. So let's get into it. Okay, so before we actually roadmap anything, we need to answer the classic dinner party question. There are two main flavors of quant. The quant researchers who do the maths, who do the modeling, statistics, machine learning, and then there are the quant developers who turn all of that brain power into working code systems and tools. As a quant dev, you will be the one building backtesting engines, optimizing pipelines, and making sure that the researchers' ideas don't just stay trapped in Jupyter notebooks forever. You are writing real code, so Python, C++, sometimes maybe even Java, sometimes also a weird proprietary language that your future self will hate, but learn how to tolerate, I suppose. So if you're a math brain with a slight coding addiction and the idea of debugging an overnight trading model gets you excited, I guess, you are in the right place. This is the where people get overwhelmed because every job spec says something on the lines of excellent knowledge of algorithms, data structures, multi-threading, concurrency, low latency systems, training infrastructure, market microstructure, quant research methods, deep learning, cloud deployment, and oh, by the way, a Nobel Prize might actually help. Without any of this fuss, let's break down what you actually need to learn in order to become a quant dev in 2025. Because learning how to code is definitely not enough and get good at maths, it's just way too vague. There are three pillars that you need to be standing on. The first one is maths, and not just maths. You need to be fluent in linear algebra, probability statistics, and optimization. You're not solving integrals for fun, but you do need to understand models enough in order to code them or optimize how they run. For example, you should understand eigenvalues because they tell you about how the stability of the system is working. You should be comfortable with conditional expectation because they're everywhere in pricing and risk models. Second one and the obvious one is programming and not just I made a calculator in Python once. You should be solid in one or maybe two key languages. I would say that Python is the essential one and C++ is a big bonus, especially if you go into high-frequency trading, so for speed-sensitive teams. As I've mentioned, you'll need to master Python because it's everywhere in research code, in prototyping, in data analysis, and not just the basics like for loops and if statements, I'm talking NumPy, Pandas, object-oriented programming, writing clean and efficient code. And crucially, you need to know how to profile and optimize code, because in quant work, slow code is pretty much useless code. You're working with massive data sets, real-time signals, and tight latency requirements. So learn to think like an engineer who writes code that actually scales. But what matters even more is your ability to write clean, maintainable, and well-tested code. Real-world experience or personal projects, internships, or even open-source work beats completed 200 lead code problems every time. What you need to have in mind, though, when building this is to make sure that you cover the fundamentals, so that you cover hash maps, trees, graphs, heaps, how to reason about time complexity, how to avoid accidentally writing something that takes off and squared when it could be off and log n. A lot of quants neglect this and end up writing slow, fragile code that doesn't scale. So you need to be the one that upscales that. And the third pillar is systems thinking. If you're working anywhere near trading infrastructure, you'll need to understand the networking basics, how data flows through a system, how latency creeps in. You don't have to be a systems admin, but knowing what a socket is, what serialization formats exist, how to monitor systems, these are things that would make you a bit more valuable as a dev in this world. Someone who builds tools that work under pressure and just don't break when markets get spicy, if you know what I mean. Let's say you're watching this in mid-2025 and thinking, I want to break in, 
I'm not there yet, what should I do this month? Well, here is the game plan that I suggest you take on. So step one is learn max for modeling. Start with the foundations, you know, I'm talking probability theory, linear algebra, numerical methods, and a pinch of stochastic calculus. But don't worry, you're not expected to be anywhere near Ito's grandchild or something. And in terms of resources, well, you can't go wrong with books like Introduction to Probability or The Concepts and Practice of Mathematical Finance. Or if you're more of a doer, this is where I would seriously recommend something like Brilliant. If you're trying to break into quant development, you need more than just a list of topics to Google at 2 a.m. Brilliant gives you an actual plan and more importantly, it helps you build deep, intuitive understanding of the maths and logic that quants use every day. I've tried a lot of platforms over the years and Brilliant really stands out because it's interactive and you're not just passively watching someone explain Bayes' theorem for the 10th time. You're doing it, you're actually doing it, you're solving problems, testing your reasoning, getting instant feedback and that's what makes the learning actually stick. If I were starting again, I'd dive into their probability, mathematical thinking and statistics courses. They're designed for people like us, people who want to apply maths to real problems, not just memorize formulas for an exam. And honestly, they are very, very fun. It's the kind of practice that actually keeps your brain engaged after a long day at work or at uni. So if you're serious about leveling up your maths foundations this year and building the toolkit you'll need as a quant, go check out my link, which is brilliant.org slash Roman, which you also have down in the description below. You'll get a 30 day free trial and also 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks a lot, a lot to Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. And let's get back to building our roadmap. Step two would be to get good at Python and then C++. Python is non-negotiable, as we discussed. Learn the language deeply. Understand object-oriented design, testing NumPy pandas, and how to write code that's clean enough to be read at 2 a.m. by a sleep-deprived team lead. Once that's solid, dip your toes into C++, especially if you're applying to firms known for low-latency work, so think high-frequency trading. Don't just skim the syntax, build something. Build something like a trading simulator, an order book matcher, anything practical. And the third step would be to build projects that actually show something. And what I mean by this one is instead of generic Kegel competitions, build something tailored. So this could be a portfolio optimizer, a backtester for factor models, a trade execution simulator, a market data scraper, and, and analysis pipeline, and put it on GitHub, document it, show that you understand markets and engineering. Okay, now you've got the skills. What about the actual getting hired part? Well, tailor your CV for the job. Non-negotiable. Quant dev hiring managers don't want a two-page autobiography, really. So just highlight your stronger technical projects and relevant experiences. Add links to your GitHub, show your thought process, not just results. Prep for interviews, but with purpose. By which I mean, don't just grind lead code. Do relevant problems, do systems design, algorithmic challenges, debugging questions. Know your maths code, so not just fancy theorems, but working knowledge of probabilities, expectations, vector operations. Be ready for some practical questions as well. For example, how would you optimize the system? What happens if this process fails and so on? And obviously network, but like a normal person, if you know what I mean. So like reach out to people, not with a desperate Please refer me, message on LinkedIn, but rather with some thoughtful questions. Watch talks from quant firms maybe, join forums, be the kind of candidate that like to talk to twice. So let's get a bit more in that here. Now let's talk about the classic mistakes I see people make when they're trying to become a quant developer. And trust me, I've been guilty of some of these as well. So first, thinking that being great at maths or coding is enough just on its own. I see this literally all the time. Sometimes it's an algorithm wizard or they're brilliant at stochastic calculus, but they can't bridge the gap between the two. Well, quant devs leave at that intersection. Your job is to take a complex idea, maybe a model that a quant researcher has come up with, and turn it into robust, efficient production quality code. If you're missing half of that, you're not ready yet. So avoid over-specializing too soon. Make sure that you're building both muscles, the technical engineering and the mathematical thinking side of things. Second mistake is obviously the most obvious one, which is not writing clean code. And I can't stress this enough, really. In a quant environment, messy code is dangerous. It slows everyone down. It introduces bugs that are hard to trace and it'll make your life miserable when you have to debug your own spaghetti code, as I've mentioned before, at 2 a.m. during a production incident. Learn how to write code that other people and also future you can actually read. That means naming things well, structuring modules logically, writing tests and documenting tricky parts. The goal isn't just for your code to work, it is for it to be maintainable. 
And the third one is neglecting the communication skills. I know this sounds very, very soft compared to learn C++ concurrency or master stochastic processes, but if you can't explain your ideas clearly, whether it's to a researcher, a trader or another dev, you'll struggle to move forward. In a fast-moving, high-stakes environment like quant finance, being able to articulate trade-offs, flag risks or propose improvements to a system is essential. So practice explaining your code and your maths. Write clear commit messages, document your work, and be the person that people want to collaborate with. And last, and this is actually a big one, thinking you can cram this journey into three months because you're just learning a bit of math and coding is a huge mistake. Becoming a good quant dev takes time, and that's okay. What matters is actually steady progress, not instant mastery. Here is the truth, becoming a quant dev is not a short term game at all. You can't cram it in a weekend, it's a 6 to 12 month commitment I would say of consistent effort, real learning and occasional you know, existential crisis because you can't have a good life without them, can you? But the payoff, that's actually massive. You're building tools that move real capital, you're solving complex problems at the intersection of maths, code and chaos. And you're paid, well, very well, to do what a lot of us find genuinely fun. So if you're watching this and thinking, am I good enough for this? You are, but only if you start and actually stick with it. And you've got it. If this video helped at all map out your journey, don't hesitate to give it a like, drop a comment and share it with your fellow confused mathematicians. And if you want more videos on the actual skills that you need, from maths to coding to interviews, subscribe because I've got plenty more where this is coming from. Also, you might be interested in joining my Discord server where we are trying to build a community of like-minded people interested in maths, coding, quant finance and learning from each other. If that sounds up your alley, well, you have the invite link down in the description below. Thanks again so, so much for watching. Genuinely hope that it helped you. Do not forget to follow me on Instagram for more content if you enjoy it. And yeah, good luck out there. You've got it. See you in the next one. I'm sick of daydreaming. I just want the feeling of you in my bed. I'm down at this waistline, right below your waistline. Want you by my head.